right guys, we're here in the office and we're looking at one of my cordyceps terrariums. Um, so I've been foraging lots of wild cordyceps recently. Um, if you can check on Instagram, we've probably found like a hundred specimens in the past like two weeks. Um, been cloning lots of cordyceps, but I also decided to uh, make some cordyceps terrariums. Uh, these are inspired by my friend Charlie Aller. Uh, my friends Charlie Aller and Nina O'Malley from Mush Love Mushrooms in Virginia. Um, I saw uh, Charlie put some in a container and kept them in the moss for a little bit. So I tried it out and this actually worked out really co uh, really good. It's fun to see them growing. You could see some of them sporulated. Um, some of them have even gone. That one's passed. Um, but I think it's about time that I harvest some of these and then take them down into the lab to be cloned. Um, this one's actually pretty cool because... Uh, I found this jar in the woods near where we were forging these cordyceps, so I just put the cordyceps in there. Probably some algae that was just growing in the soil. Um, so this one has all sorts of crazy soil organisms on it, probably. Um, but yeah, I figured um, since I was about to harvest one of them, I'll show you guys um, what, what the harvesting process looks like. So uh, we're going to go ahead and pull one of these out and then get it cracking for you guys. Might as well start with this one that went bad. Maybe I'll still might be able to get some good clean tissue out from the host. Ooh. Oh, it's one of those little brown hosts. These are the most fragile. I tend not to work with the host if they're broken open. I mean, you can see this one's still uh, fairly encased. My ceiling is kind of extending out. Um, yeah, I'll definitely be able to get some clean tissue off of that. So we'll set this guy aside and I'll take that down to the lab to be cloned. Um, I'll, I'll be doing that probably on Instagram TV. Um, if any of you haven't checked out my Instagram, go check that out at mycosymbiote. Um, get some exclusive content that I don't post on YouTube. So we got another one here. Oh, and this is another one with the brown pupae. These are a little bit less common for me in Pennsylvania, the ones with the little brown pupae. Um, are these from the same spot that we found the other guys? No, no, these are from closer to the house, mm. not on the on the east shore. Oh no. Oh, oh well. Um, it's a little bit extra moist in there because I've had this container closed. Um, should still be able to get some decent tissue out of the fr fruiting body and out of the pupa on that one. This one's really interesting. My friend Philip found this. Um, after MycoFest, I took some folks out that came out from out of town uh, to go look for cordyceps, and my friend Philip uh, found this one growing in a uh, rotten piece of wood. Again, this is a little brown bug. Oh, this one looks nice. Yeah, this one's really nice. Cool. See the bug. Ooh, that's gross. So I'm not even gonna take this one into the lab. Um, I'm just gonna take the fruiting body and we can use the fruiting body for medicine. But this, when you see the bugs all mushy like that, typically means that there's some bug or something like that in there eating the mycelium. So um, I've been talking about it with my friend Ryan Gates and a couple other people, but we believe that in the wild, um, the cordyceps have mites um, that's not what the mite looks like. That's just another <laughs> bug that's probably in the moss. But there'll be mites inside the cordyceps that probably are uh, eating the mycelium and then transferring the mycelium crawling through the soil, um, helping it to disperse itself. Um, so what do you think? Should I open one more? Or? Yeah, one more. Which one should I do? This one, big one? Yeah, maybe we'll do that sticky. There might be two. Oh, this is probably one pupa still. Yeah. yeah. That's what I meant to say. Uh, let's see what we got going on here. You can see it dropped its spores on. It has these white spores. It's weird doing this in the house. I'm so used to just like being out in the woods. Like This one has a crazy color on it. So This is something Charlie noticed as well. That they got like a lot darker when they were growing inside. Whoa. Yeah. These are tall. Mm-hmm. 
They probably have grown. They've been downstairs for like five, six days. Did you have them in light when they were downstairs? Yeah, they were in the cordyceps grow room with the rest of the other cordyceps. Right, so that one broke off. Maybe we make tea. Yeah, we have so many cordyceps. So this one's on the spiky pupae host. And I don't know if it's because of the amount of moisture that they were receiving, but this one again is broke up, broken up. And you can kind of see the head of the bug, um, but this is not something that I'm going to clone. It's all mushy in there. Yeah, yeah I'm not gonna clone that. It almost looks like there's poop in the middle. But yeah, we can take these cordies in. I kind of want to put that under the microscope and look at the parathecium. They look really expressed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alright guys, well, um, thanks for checking out the Cordyceps Terrarium here in our office. Um, definitely stay tuned for more videos. Um, maybe we'll get some more wild Cordyceps videos this, this year. Uh, maybe I might do a, a How to Clone Cordyceps video or something like that. Just drop in the comments what you want to see. Um, I'll definitely be posting more content. Um, well, there's another mushroom in here. It's wild. But yeah, um, as always, propagate my CL8.